Views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube. And on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you're encouraged to post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not. There's a whole slew of stories there that you really want to read in order to be informed about what's going on in this world of ours that we all share there's also a twitter feed there and if you join the twitter feed you will get updates on those stories and others alerted to you uh it's a twitter news feed twitter.com slash gary baumgarten and thanks to our great friends at crn digital talk radio we're syndicated to an additional 12 million households i am your host gary baumgarten well, this is, of course, the recurring story. You know, you ever hear about the book or the movie about the fictional book, The Never-Ending Story? Uh, that's what the story is about the quest for peace in the Middle East. It's a never-ending story. And uh, I'm getting a little weary myself. I've been the eternal optimist when it comes to this. But, you know, every president, except for the last one, uh, when they came into office, almost immediately began working for a brokering of peace in the Middle East. The last president did in his last uh, year in office, perhaps uh, concerned about his legacy. I don't know why it took him so long to wake up to the need to move ahead on a peace uh, treaty. When you talk to the Israelis, they're pretty adamant about why the reason there is no peace is because of the Palestinians refusing to agree. When you talk to the Palestinians, you hear that the reason that there can't be any peace is because, well, yeah, the Israelis propose things, but, well, look what they're trying to impose on us. We can't live with that. When you talk to the Israelis, it's all about those bad Palestinians who are firing rockets over and coming across with suicide bombs. When you talk to the Palestinians, they say that they are being squeezed by the Israelis on territory that ought to really be theirs autonomously, and it is a form of apartheid. Um, you know, there is no middle ground when it comes to this situation. Now we have a president who has uh, put forth his vision uh, for a peace plan for the Middle East in the hopes that the United States can broker something. That's not an impossibility. It was done, believe it or not, in Jimmy Carter's administration. Remember, land for peace the Suez back to Egypt in exchange for peace. And there is peace between Israel and Egypt, although there is still anti-Semitism in the Egyptian press. And there is a line of, um, of supplies of uh, munitions uh, coming into the territories through Egypt. But there is relative peace between the Israelis and the Egyptians. Their armies are no longer staring one another down. Blood is not being spilled on either side. And we can thank uh, Anwar Sadat and Menachem Begin and uh, Jimmy Carter for making that a possibility. And uh, now we have uh, President Obama, who, as we all know, has uh, come forth with his projection of what the peace should mean. He is, of course, at his he has a pretty macro vision of how to resolve this. Uh, one thing he wants to do is isolate Iran. He's trying to get the Arab world siding with the United States against the threat that Iran imposes. We'll have more on that, by the way, tomorrow, because tomorrow uh, will be the uh, election in Iran uh, for president of that country. And Ahmadinejad uh, very well may be defeated, but what will replace them? Will anything change with the mullahs in charge? So you don't want to miss tomorrow's show. But I don't want to digress too far from the point of today's uh, program. Um, he wants to, and he has successfully enlisted the aid of several uh, Arab nations, most notably uh, Jordan and Saudi Arabia and uh, Egypt, in helping to pressure the sides into uh, coming back to the negotiating table and embrace what 
really is uh, the vision going back many U.S. administrations, the so-called roadmap to peace, the so-called two-state solution. Uh, one of the things that this president is trying to impose on uh, Mr. Netanyahu is a uh, secession of building of settlements or outposts on disputed land uh, on the West Bank. Now, Netanyahu, uh, unlike his uh, predecessors and unlike himself to some degree when he was last prime minister of Israel, um, is not capitulating to uh, what the president of the United States is asking him uh, to do. He is standing up and saying, no, I'm not at this moment for a two-state solution. And no, I'm not at this moment willing to stop uh, building settlements on the uh, West Bank in disputed lands. So today, Haaretz newspaper, one of the major newspapers left-leaning in Israel, uh, came out with a story which says, well, the, pres the Prime Minister Netanyahu will be giving a speech on Sunday in which he will outline his plan for peace, his counterproposal, which I think is a brilliant thing for Netanyahu to do. Because, of course, he has a problem domestically in Israel. He cannot be seen as Obama's puppet, but he has a problem globally as well. He cannot be seen as being an opponent to a peace process. So what Netanyahu is going to do on Sunday in a major speech, perhaps the most major of his political career, is uh, outline his own alternative plan for peace. So he is not acquiescing entirely to what Obama wants. He's his own man, but he does not come across as being opposed to peace with the Palestinians. But of course, it depends on what he suggests, whether or not the Palestinians will find it palatable. Now, one thing he is demanding is that the Palestinians recognize the state of Israel and accept its right to exist. I don't think anybody outside of some in the Palestinian community would object to that. If you're going to make peace with me, you have to recognize that I am here. I am somebody, as Jesse Jackson might say. And so uh, it would seem that that would not be an unacceptable demand. However, let's not lose sight of the fact, and I know I sound a little like I'm lecturing, and I know most of you in the audience are already aware of this, but let's just recap this for a second, uh, especially for those who may be new to the game when it comes to this issue and slightly uninitiated, that the Palestinian Authority, which is willing to negotiate, controls uh, one part of the occupied territories, but Hamas which the United States recognizes as a terrorist organization, controls the other. And unlike the Palestinian Authority, which is willing to talk to Israel, Hamas is not because Hamas, in its charter, not only doesn't recognize the state of Israel, but is bent on Israel's destruction.